Hi, welcome back to Sabertooth Pottery. Great to see you again. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here and you are into pottery videos and anything having to do with pottery, I do tutorials. I talk about clay and I talk about other things we can do with clay. I try to post at least once or twice a week. So I'll have something out there for you pertaining to pottery. Um, click like, click subscribe and click the little notification bell if you want to get notifications. Uh, today's video, we're going to be talking about throwing pitchers. Uh, in our last video, we were throwing a vase and our pitcher today is going to be a lot like that vase. The only difference is, is that we're gonna have a spout on it and a handle. At this point now, I've already taught you how to pull a handle. And if you haven't learned how to pull a handle, click the link up above. That'll take you to a video that will teach you how to pull handles if that's something that you are still learning to do. So you're gonna need to know how to make a really tall cylinder and your basic vase shape, which is in our previous video. And you're gonna know how to, you need to know how to pull a handle as well. So, and attach that to your piece. So um, if you are ready, you have all your tools and you wanna get started, let's go ahead. So first thing we wanna do, of course, is wedge our clay and get the clay that we need to throw our pitcher. And we're gonna wedge it, make sure we get all those air bubbles out of there. And I'm gonna use the technique on making the ram's head wedge. If you haven't learned how to wedge yet, I have a folder that has all the tutorials you need to know on beginning ceramics. Here, we're gonna center our clay and bring it up. And then we're gonna make our cylinder, the body that we need for our pitcher. So we're gonna be making a smaller pitcher for perhaps milk or cream for your tea. So we don't need a very tall cylinder. Now we want to make the reservoir for our liquid. So we're going to make a belly on our piece by having our inside finger on the bottom and our outside finger on top. And make just as much space as you think you're going to need for your liquid. Bring the neck of your pitcher up the rest of the way and cut off any bits that you don't want. Clean it up. And we're going to go in and we're going to put the spout to our pitcher on afterwards. Here I use my chamois to just make sure that that edge there is nice and smooth and rounded and not a flat, sharp edge. And then I'm gonna clean up the foot down here at the bottom, get it nice undercut. So that way I have minimal trimming afterwards. Once you're ready to take your piece off the wheel, get your wheel nice and wet and use your wire tool and cut under and then just pull it off gently at the foot. And of course, afterwards, make sure to always clean up your wheel. Now we're just gonna pull our handle and we're gonna be really gentle with it. You remember always to be very gentle when you're pulling your handle and do both sides. If you don't know how to pull a handle, I do have a video that teaches you how to pull handles and it's more explanatory. So go ahead and click the link if you'd like to learn to know how to throw handles. On a side note, I'd like to mention about keeping your hands hydrated. As we work with clay, our hands get really roughed up and dehydrated. So keep your hands moist and hydrated with a nice moisturizer. Now that we have the pieces made for our pitcher, we're going to recenter our piece and trim the foot. Remember to always center closest to the foot. 
Before you trim, make sure you look at your piece and evaluate how much you think you should trim off beforehand. Trim as much of your foot as you think you need before moving on to the next step. Here I'm making sure that the bottom of my piece is shorter than the foot of my piece. That way when we fire it in the kiln, it doesn't stick to the kiln shelf. Now I'd like to show you two different ways you can make a spout to your piece. The first being of which, where I pull on the mouth of the piece with a wet hand and pull it like I would for a handle to make the spout. You can do this directly on the piece. Um, my piece is a little dry, so I had difficulty getting the spout the way I wanted it, but for the sake of showing this demonstration, I just wanted to put this in here. Next, we score the areas where we're gonna put our handle and we're gonna put slip on the scored areas and we're gonna score our handle as well and attach the top piece first. When you're attaching your handle, be sure to hold the inside of the pot, like you see here, so that way when you're pushing in the handle, you do not warp your piece. Now the second way we could add a spout to our pitcher is we cut the groove where we're going to put an additional piece of clay. You can make it whatever shape you want and you attach it by scoring the clay, adding slip, and then attaching the handle. Here I'm measuring it first to make sure that I got the right size. It's also important that if you make a V-shaped cut like I did here, that you make the bottom of the V nice and rounded because if it comes to a sharp point, it can crack in the kiln. Now I'm taking a little bit off the bottom, making sure that my handle is the right size before attaching it. On the inside here where our spout is, I'm gonna be adding a coil. And that coil is going to help give that little area some reinforcement and to smooth it out. So that way in the kiln, it doesn't crack or explode. Once you've added the coil, go ahead and smooth it out so it blends in with the rest of the piece. And fix up your spout as much as you want and clean up any extra slip all around the handle as well. And if you desire, you can cut off some of the spout so it's more level with your piece. Either way, I think it looks really good um, whether you cut some off or not. I leave a little bit extra on because once the piece is dry, I'm gonna go back and, and clean up that lip. And voila, you have your pitcher. You can make pitchers all different sizes and all different shapes. You can make the handles and the spouts different as well. It just really depends on your taste and what kind of aesthetic you want. bad huh that's pretty easy it's pretty simple as far as functional pieces go you have the body of your piece you have your spout and you have your handle and, and that's pretty simplistic as we go along we're gonna keep doing more and more intricate things that are a little bit harder to make um, so this out of all the things that we've done so far is probably one of the most complex pieces um, teapots probably being the most complex piece, but you don't have to worry about that just yet. But those have a lot of components that go into them um, as far as uh, throwing and pulling and assembly. It's, it's a lot of work. 
So I just wanted to start small. And you have one of your first kind of like, I don't know if you feel this way, but when I made my first picture, like, you know, you can use a mug, you can use a bowl, but I feel like a picture is just slightly more of a functional piece that has some kind of purpose other than just your everyday, I'm gonna eat food out of this. So now that we have got our picture, which is one of our first pieces that requires multiple pieces that we made with our hands to cre create one final piece, our next project, our next video is gonna be about lidded jars. I'm gonna teach you how to uh, throw the jar body and I'm gonna teach you how to make a flange which is the part of the mouth of your jar where your lids gonna sit on and then I'm gonna teach you how to throw a lid and um, it's optional you can either have your you can either have handles on your jar if you want you don't have to um, you can put feet on it if you want as well um, and the optional part is whether you want to throw the um, handle for your lid on the lid itself or attach it afterwards. So stay tuned for our next video on throwing lidded jars and I'll see you there, okay? All right, thanks for watching. See you next time, bye. So I hope that you know I'm getting better about talking to the camera that's that's a thing that's really nerve-wracking for me so I'm getting better at that and I feel like I'm having less outtakes that's good right yeah, yeah. I don't need you here to feel good no I'm not angry I got better things to do tell your friends I will be just fine